for me right. where I was. Right. Not only that, it ain't like it's by my much whatever that I see any of, sure. of this. So how am I going to despise anybody for something God gave to me freely? Yeah. That just doesn't make any sense. I can't point to what I've done. Yeah. Do, do you see what I'm saying? I can't point to that. All I can point to is that God showed it. So how can I now despise someone who I think doesn't see it like me? Yeah. You know? But I tell you what, I do get real happy when someone understands what I say. <laughs> you, do, you, you do get real happy. Yes, right. I know. Well, you can be happy about this message because I understand what you say. Glory to God. <laughs> Glory to God. I had a great time putting these notes together. It was a fun, fun exercise for me this week. And I didn't even, you know, normally I, I follow very closely to what you what you preach. But this week I didn't do that. Yeah. Nor, as, I told you we should make a chart. Well, I started down that path, but I didn't end up. It was too hard to format it all. Taking it all going. So I just listed off the mind of Adam in a page and a half. And then I thought, you know what? This really goes good with the faith of the Son of God. So I went back and I've reused that. You know, I already have that synopsis, two and a half pages. I just sucked that up and put that in here. Yep, amen. Talking about the mind of Christ. Mm -hmm. But just the whole. I just was captured by the analogy of the painting mm -hmm. and the fact that there's two paintings and there's a master painter for each one of them yep. and that mm -hmm. each stroke is an element of our belief system one way or another and what goes into that mm -hmm. into those paintings and that the whole thing is just having your mind transformed from the painting the serpent did to the painting that Christ has done. Yep. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yep. That's Romans 2 in a nutshell. 12 2 in a nutshell. Yep. Right there. That's it. That's it. Yes. It's like, man, is this good. That's it. So I I thoroughly was blessed by putting these notes together yes. for everybody this week. And, and then what, what happens is we start finding it easy to trust God. You bet. Because you start seeing God the way Jesus saw God, where you don't judge God by what you see in the world. You don't judge God by what you see manifesting in your life. You don't judge what God thinks of you right. by what you see. See, for so long we talked about God's love was demonstrated in Jesus at the cross. But then we sat with this view that God was angry with man because of their sin, or they were disgusting to him because of their sin, or he couldn't stand to look at them because of their sin, or that he had forsaken us because of our sin. And that completely neuters the power of God demonstrating his love at the cross. Yes. Right? Totally. It strips it. Yes. And so the only way you're actually going to experience the love of God and the depth of your being, like that message I preached a long time ago, being filled with the fullness of God. Mm -hmm. The only way you're going to find yourself animated by the love of God is if you can see the love that we say manifested at the cross is the picture of what God always wanted to yes. do about man's sin. Yes. You see, we yep. got this idea that when God saw man in their sin, that he had this kind of a thing for a while where he wanted to spank them. Or he had this kind of a thing for a while where he wanted to put them outside of the house and make them live in the doghouse. Right. We had this thing where God was this of a mind about man because of their sin that he couldn't stand to look upon them, that he couldn't stand to be around them. That's the kind of mind we had about God concerning our sin, right? right? That he had to give us the stiff arm, that he had to turn his back on us. But at the cross, God revealed what he always felt in his heart to do about man's sin. Do you know what he felt in his heart to do? I'm going to come. I'm going to take their sin upon myself. I'm going to take their death upon myself so I can absorb it into myself. And I know that in me is a life that swallows all death and darkness. And then I can swallow up their death and their darkness. Right. And so the cross is the manifestation of what was always in God's heart about our sin mm -hmm. and how he wanted to deal with us based on it, right? Yes, yes, yes. yes. It's like my older yes. brother. Yes. When I was a freshman in high school, I couldn't have fight any of my own fights because in the day my older brother heard there was going to be a fight coming to me, there was going to be no scenario where I was going to fight the fight or I was going to take on the beating or get jumped because he was going to be there and he was going to come and deal with it. Mm -hmm. Right? Yeah. And it's like that way with God. God never looked at us and dealt with us, wanted to deal with us any other way about our sin than what we see manifested at the cross. Right. That's what was always in his heart. Let me come 
and die. You want to know what God thought about man when they ate from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil? Let me come and die away their death. Let me come and absorb their suffering and their pain. Let me come and enter into their darkness. Let me come and take vengeance upon that which is killing my people. Let me come and destroy what the serpent has done. That's what was always in his heart. Always. Let me come and clothe their nakedness. Let me come and uphold their lives. Let, that's what God always thought. Right. You see, but if you think God thought a different way in the old, and you think it changed, then you're going to struggle. That's like a, we talk about mixing law and grace and how that will kill you. you. It'd be much more accurate to say this way. Mixing the carnal mind with the mind of Christ will kill you. All right. Mixing the carnal mind with the mind of Christ will negate the power behind what God said and did in Jesus. You'll see the events happen, but the word behind the events or the heart behind the events will become tainted. Yes. And it's the heart behind the events that contain the power to fill a human's heart with the love of God. It's the heart behind the events. And that's what the, the, I think I said that the message two weeks ago. But the serpent said, once God did what he did, I can't stop him from doing what he did. But what I can do is I can insert my mind concerning what he did. And then they'll think about what he did through my, my wisdom. Right. And then that will negate the power of it. Yes. That's right? what he did to Adam. He just repeated it. That, that's exactly yeah. right. Because God comes and lays down his life for us. He comes as the good Samaritan. He comes to love those who stood opposed to him. He came to love man and they nailed him to a cross and he still loved them. But what the serpent did was he said, let me get them to look at the cross as if God had to take out his anger on Jesus. Now he gets us to look at the cross as if it's some kind of a picture of God's anger towards man because of their sin. Let me get them to think that the cross is God having to forsake Jesus because he's so upset about man's sin that that's the only way he can stand to accept them. Mm. You see how that taints mm. a heart of love? Absolutely. Yeah. And now we look at Jesus dying on the cross and we see the heart of the Father behind it as being the mind of the serpent. Right. The serpent had a view of man. Yes. The serpent hated man. The serpent thought man was disgusting and despicable and worms. The serpent thought man was not even good enough to be the dirt under his feet. And he came and convinced us that that's what God thought about us. <laughs> and that everything God did in Jesus was so that God could paint us or clean us up in a good enough way to where he could then accept us in his house. That's what he did. And so now we lived our whole lives, even in grace, thinking that God thought we were despicable and disgusting. And this is what he did so he could stand to be around us. Listen, man, that doesn't possess the power to cause you to experience love. <laughs> no, it does not. The power that manifested in Jesus at the cross was that in the midst of him being so marred that you couldn't even tell that he was human. The Spirit reminded him that even there, he's beautiful to God. That even there, God sees so much beauty in him that that beauty is going to compel God to come and claim him as his own and pick him up out of the grave and take him back into his house and seat him at his right hand. Yep. And see, and Jesus knew that. He saw the sin and the death and the darkness manifesting in his body. And he was able to see that in light of this, the Father still beholds beauty in me. I'm still the apple of the Father's eye. The beauty he sees in me has not changed. Right? right? Yes. And see, that's when you really start experiencing the love of God. Right? When you realize that even when man was dead in their sin... They were as beautiful to God as they are when they believed. <laughs> you know, like in, 